ordination I was resisting the annulment of the duty of election at that time. Uh, and just not a bit uh, fantastic. But again, uh, one critical thing while we'll be talking this afternoon is your presidential ambition. I mean, a lot of Nigerians are hoping that a 2023 election will be that turning point for the country. And you are not new to elections. You were in the 2019 election. And of course, we realized um, you got about over 33,000 votes. Allocated uh, to me. Allocated. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, again, Independent National Electoral Commission, according to the results, said you got 33,953 um, votes. And that is ironic. And you came a distance um, fifth um, behind. But again, you are right here, right now, participating in the 2023 election, and your campaign theme is, we can't continue like this. That's very strange. Yes, uh, I think, uh, I want to say that it wasn't, in 1992, which is 30 years ago, but it will be 30 years ago by 2023, that we had a watershed election, uh, the June 12th. 1993 election. I was supposed to graduate officially in 1993, and then everything changed when there's no other election. So by next year again, we hope uh, it will be the turning point that we thought we would have uh, in 1993. And with regards to our campaign team, we looked at, and everybody can attest to this, that Nigeria has been heading in the right direction since independence, even before then. Independence is our own uh, goal uh, of judging the period that Nigerians ought to be in charge of their own affairs. And we've continued perpetually in the wrong direction through war, corruption, coups, uh, you know, killing, the assassination of uh, activists in this country, and some of the worst era that can happen to the nation groups that has affected Nigeria in the last 62 years. So, and we are saying we can't continue like that. It's no longer sustainable to continue this way for Nigeria and Nigerians. And fantastic. If, if, if you're just listening, you're listening to Super 93.3 FM Port Tankers, and we're speaking to Omoyele Shore. He is the AAC presidential candidate for the 2023 election. We're looking at his campaign promises, his vision for Nigerians, and what he hopes will change in the coming election and of course his campaign thing is we can't continue like this and quickly let me just quickly state again also with us in the studio we have the river state governorship candidates of the aac dr joseph Rubin. and dr joseph Rubin, maybe you just want to say one two things uh, before we continue with um more issues yes dr joseph Rubin. Pastor, thank you for inviting my presidential candidate to the studio and to my presidential candidate i want to say to you in the river state language in the main language to say or oh, you uh, that is, okay. that's your welcome to River State. Enjoy your stay in River State. Uh, fantastic. So again, let's come back to what you plan to do. You know, a lot of people know you as a social activist, and a lot of people say, well, your campaign is more of social movements. Can Nigerians actually trust a social crusader like you? And why should they trust you? Well, you can trust somebody who has been consistent for three decades, doing what is just, what is right, uh, by the people of Nigeria without any form of remuneration or accolade. Instead, I have been abused, I have been jailed. I spent six years in the university instead of four because I was fighting when I was young, at the age of uh, 18. I started as soon as we got to the university, almost. I've been fighting for a just and egalitarian and democratic Nigeria. And if you compare that to other candidates who have always been fighting for their pockets, uh, you see the difference is clear in terms of consistency, character, competence, exposure, even education. I think uh, I have uh, we have over 18, we have about 18 candidates right now, mm -hmm. and uh, none of them, none of them can say they have the kind of experience I have. Uh, Tell us about that experience you have. Well, the, the most dominant experience I had was starting life early, fighting for justice, and fighting some of the biggest or the most monstrous powers in this country, starting with military rule, mm -hmm. uh, 
continuing until about 10 years when I left Nigeria and going and starting something brand new, which is media activism through Sahara Reporter. Uh, and then deciding one day to leave whatever I have been through. I mean, I've had children, wife, home, car, all those great things. Just head back to my country, Nigeria. I not only uh, do Sahara but I'm also a university teacher. Uh, I taught for almost eight years in two universities. One for two years, every year, and the second one for eight years. Most people don't know this uh, about me because I don't brag about that. But, and then heading to Nigeria, as I said, it's time to go solve Nigeria's problem, which brought me to Nigeria in 2017, and then 2018, I decided to run for president, and I did up to 2019. And between 2019, uh, end of election and now, I've engaged in another kind of struggle, which is a revolutionary struggle to stop the shenanigans uh, that's associated with both governors, institutions, and our society in Nigeria. And that took me back to jail. But, but you see, again, a lot of people love the fact that Moyele Shore is always willing to fight for the ordinary people. But again, the way you go about it is something else. Um, that has destabilized well, those in court, the elite. For example, in one of your comments, you said if you were given power, you would make education free at all levels. Again, how do you plan to do that? It's an investment. Um, Tell us about that investment. Let's, let's first of all bring down the problems. University. If you are a university student in Nigeria, you have spent eight months. In the last, between the last, in the last year, you know, this year, at home. And if you step out of the university area, you have 20 million kids who are out of school. Now let's do the stats of the number of kids that are in school. University students are 1.7 million only in a country that has 200 million kids. Only 1.7 higher institutional students are going to in school. Secondary schools, 5.2 million only. I don't have exact statistics for primary school, but I can tell you that it's not going to more than about maybe 3 million or slightly over that. We can debate that, but I'm not sure. So a country that has 200 million people has got more people who are supposed to be in school on the streets. So what they were doing is to look at this number take out the 20 million off the street by every means necessary because it's the investment we must make. Why should we make the investment? It costs Nigeria 14,000 Naira per day to feed a prisoner. But Nigeria doesn't spend 14,000 Naira per day per month on keeping students in school. That's something wrong with us. But why must we make this investment that this is going to become the powerhouse of the future? And education is one investment you must make in any country that is going to compete and survive and be sustained beyond a certain period of time. If we keep going on this trajectory, we are going to crash as a nation under the pressure of those kids neglected. If you do your little research with bandits, terrorists in Nigeria, the first thing they will tell you, kidnappers, is that they have been cheated out of the system. That's what I'll tell you. I cover a lot of these things. So now we go to the investment. It's to look at how many of these kids do we want to train? And how are, they going, are we going to be able to afford this? Considering that they can't afford to train themselves, their parents can't afford to send them to school. Only a few Nigerians can send their children to the UK. But if you look at UK, US, or whatever they send their kids to, you know, for grade school. But if you look at the cost of sending a child to the UK to go to school from primary school to uh, university, it can build five secondary schools and can train another hundred people. And these are monies that they usually steal from you anyways. So we want to make the investment. What I would like it is an investment we must make. We must put aside at least 15% of our budget on an annual basis to rapidly increase the number of people who are going to school, provide them this education in free and fair manner, provide access and quality of education to them, because it's not just about sending people to school. But, but again, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry. We have to make sure that they are 
education is top notch yeah. because we need it for this country to prosper in the future and to have prosperity, peace, and make progress and be able to compete internationally as a nation. You see, for you to achieve that as a president, yes. you need to do a lot of work, particularly from the area of legislation, because you are trying to change the entire structure of education in the country. But again, looking at the legislation and looking at the laws of the country, you yourself have dis has described the 1999 Constitution of the Red Federal Republic as a fraudulent it law. It is. It is a fraudulent document. And yeah. you're saying that if you become I say the it president, I've yeah, said it authoritatively. So will... again, why do you? feel that the 1999 constitution is a fraudulent law. If I ask you, and I'm sure you probably, in my age, if you knew anybody that participated in writing the 1999 constitution, I'm sure you would be able to tell me. Yeah? And beyond that, you should go and listen to Umwodo, who was the Minister of Information, I think, under Abu Salami, and spent some time with Tobasanjo. As at the time Obasanjo was about to be sworn in, there was no copy of the Nigerian constitution available because it was not a constitution that was made by the people. They couldn't find, they had to use a photocopy of this constitution because it was a constitution made by the military and imposed on the Nigerian people. Anything you call a constitution must meet certain parameters before it can be legitimate. One of it is that it was made by the people. And if the people are not the drafters, to get the imprimatur, on that document, you must let it go through a referendum. It is after then, when people say yes or no to certain parts of it, that it then becomes a legitimate document. Did the 1999 constitution pass through those processes? Did it meet those parameters? Was it a legitimate document? No. Did the military have the right and the authority to produce a document and impose it on us by decree? No. So it's as simple as that. So you're going to change that constitution? Oh, definitely. You, you know, talk People who are talking about restructuring, I hear it all the time. They are, as a matter of fact, asking for the constitution of Nigeria to be changed. You know, when Omo Yene Shoure talks... has foundational implications for Nigeria. When Omo Yene Shoure talks like this, you sort of, well, start to be elite. I mean, I mean for, for about twice now, you've been excluded from the presidential debate. Even this coming presidential debate, you're also been excluded from it, though you said you protested, but I wonder how you intend to protest that. When they did it in 2019, I took them to court. The day the judge was supposed to give his uh, ruling, he said his vacation had ended. He didn't give a ruling. I uh, protested against it. I'm not going to expose exactly how we intend to do that. I understand that the elites have, you know, get ratchet when they hear from people with progressive ideas. But Nigeria has lived for the elites for so long. It is time for it to revive to the people. Otherwise, just call it a elite country and forget calling it Nigeria. You know, a country where, you know, they said out of the 128 million account holders and banks, right, only 0 0.6 of them have up to 500,000 dollars in their account. 0 0.6. Do you know how it was 0 0.6 of 128 million, so about 720 something thousand people in a country with 200 million people. That is unquestionable. And Oxford, an NGO in the UK, said five Nigerians have more money than 99% like of Nigeria. Nigeria has served the elites way beyond its capacity. It is time for the elites to also allow Nigerians to own and control their own country. That's why I'm not afraid to say these things. If the people keep saving themselves and keep voting for the elite, as that proverb says that, you know, the forest kept voting for the axe. And when they ask, why are you doing this? They say, because it's hand is made of wood. Since they made that decision, the forest has never rested. So if Nigerian people want to keep voting for the axe, the forest of Nigeria wants to keep voting for the axe, we just start cutting down the trees. The elites have ruined this country. They have taken us for granted, taken us for a ride. They have shoved us down the soaking way of life. They have, there's nothing they haven't done to us. We can't keep pretending that we are happy that we are being jacked around by the elite like this. We want to change that. That's why we keep telling you we cannot continue like this. It's a tone to warn the elite that that period of slavery and you know, servitude 
it's coming to an end. Whether they like it Well, again, we will see because the election is coming up in, in, in February. And again, uh, talking about the election, in the 2000 and a 19 election, President Mohamed Wari won with over 15 million votes, and People's Democratic Party got over 11 million votes, and you got just about 33,000 votes. Again, that's some far distance from the two dominant political parties, even though you have called that the two political parties um, should be, I mean, exterminated. But again, the same people you campaigned to in 2019 election, are the same demography that Labour is campaigning to. So, looking at it, doing some permutation, there's a likelihood that you might not even get up to 33,000 in the 2023 election. Am I correct? No, you're not correct. Because in 2019, there was no election in Nigeria. There was a selection. It was that Buhari and the APC selected him as the president of Nigeria. So that's why I don't prefer to the uh, 2019 elections in my speeches, in my public interviews, they don't pass for what you call an election. And it's not only on the radio station that I've said it. I was asked this question and asked to renounce it when I was in detention that there was an election. In fact, part of the reason they arrested me on time was that they thought my, what they call my position might affect the position of the Supreme Court that was ruling on that election. And that um, calling for a revolution at a time that people are in doubt what the credibility of the election could actually spark a revolution. So every political party candidate have a right to speak to demographics that they believe can make them win the election. That doesn't affect me. And you can't be doing the permutation of how many votes that we have until we have elections. My goal, number one, is to make sure that we have elections. Now, part of how they read these elections is what you've already spoken about. It's not to allow fresh ideas and voices like mine to be heard across the country. That's why they cut me off from debate. And that should not only bother people, but should make them happy that there's someone in this race that is system. The established elite system is not happy with. If you are not happy with the elites and the way they have uh, cheated you over these years, you got a candidate. That's the easiest way to find a candidate. Fantastic. You're listening to Super 93.3 FM Port Accord, and we have with us in the studio the presidential candidate of the AAC, Omoye Le Shore. He's a human rights activist, he's a right campaigner, and he's been in need for the past 20, 32 years. He's with us in the studio talking about his vision for the country in the 2023 election, what he thinks the challenges are. Now, we'll be speaking to him more and also would like to entertain calls from those listening to us. You want to call us live and ask a question? The number to call to the studio line is 0705-079-1021. That is 0705-079-1021. 1021. You can as well call 081 174 31021. And those are the two numbers to call should you want to ask Omoyele Shore, the presidential candidate of AAC, questions on the 2023 election. But just before I come to telephone line, now I'm a little bit curious because uh, just some days ago, you called for the sack of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria over the redesigning of the Naira. And you said it's a very stupid policy that because Naira is not doing very well and the guy is, or the governor, is redesigning the Naira. And you said the government with you in charge would have something. Tell us a little bit more about that. Why yes. do you think the redesigning is stupid? You know, the, just so that you know that I was right, since they announced the redesigning of the Naira, the Naira has lost almost 200 Naira in value. What the Nigerian government should do is to have competent managers in the macroeconomic sector mm. who can help advance and prosecute or execute policies that will strengthen the value of the Naira. What the Naira needs is revaluation, not redesigning. The Naira's value is what should be the concern of anybody that is within the macroeconomic sector. And you forgot to say that I also call for National Assembly, by the way, to impeach the president for 
such terrible, uh, you know, uh, economic uh, attitude. Because why? Even if you make the naira the most beautiful currency in the world, the bread that you buy in the market doesn't look at. They don't have eyes. Price don't have eyes. But, but they can react to value. It is the purchasing power of the naira that should concern the central bank bubble, not the lipstick that needs to be placed over the naira. So I would have sacked. I would have sacked this guy a long time ago. I mean, I, I don't know. I would have sacked both of them, like the president and CBA governor, both of them are incompetent people, and I've said this openly everywhere. But I know that NBC is going to come very, that that's a very That's a very serious statement because you cannot just say the president of the country is incompetent, and that's a president. No, I can say that. I can say that. I mean, that's why I want to replace him. That's why I want to replace him. If, okay. if he's competent, people will be asking for him to do it all time. Lula. There's no, there's in Brazil, no, there's no I just come back after eight years because no provision people for love time in the in the nation's constitution. Well, well, I'm just saying that people can joke around with it. If someone did very well, people were asking for Obama to contest for third time when he finished his tenure, right. even though there was no provision for it. Is a way of saying, you know, I'm complimenting you. Okay, yes. so I, I'm just going to take two calls in the initial, and I will come back to the studio talking more to Omoyele Shore. Omoyele Shore is the presidential. Zero two one. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, very offline. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah. Afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us, and this is Super Yeah. Thank you. My name is Harry. Harry, where are you calling you from? From University of Port Harcourt. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I just want to. I don't know if it's a comment or a question. I just want to know why uh, the presidential candidate of AAP deviated from his blind path. Uh, we apologize, Harry, from Uniports, but you may just call again. Hello, good afternoon. Well, I don't know if it is the network, but um, the, the, the lines are very helpful. Now, you can also join us on social media and ask us a question on social media. Follow us on Facebook, Lee SuperFM93.3, on Instagram, SuperFM93.3, and on Twitch, SuperFMPH. Let's try this one. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Yes, good afternoon. Yes, um, but it's a little bit faint. You may have to speak up a little bit. Well, again, I'm sorry. It is quite awful. Now, this is what we can do. Uh, if you're trying to get across to us, you can send us a note voice on WhatsApp. On WhatsApp, send your comments. Just record 45 seconds and send it to this number, 90 1021 on WhatsApp, 90 and that is the number on WhatsApp. So send us a very short note, voice, and ask your question to Omoyele Shore. Let's just try to take some of the call. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. All right, um, Omoyele Shore, we come back to the telephone lines. Yeah, I, I, know I think somebody is trying to exclude me from the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just take this. Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Hello. Well, the line keep coming in. Again, don't forget, you can send us voice message on WhatsApp and record a short voice message 
or send us a text message on this number, text message only to this number 09059481021. Text message only to 09059481021 or a short WhatsApp message and we'll take all over there. Now I'm, I'm speaking to the presidential candidate of the AAC Omoyele show there and he's been talking to us for the past 30 minutes. Now again, uh, another interesting thing you said and the other day. You accuse the APC of stealing your ideas. Yeah. And you talked about the issue of minimum wage, the issue of democracy day being June 12th, are your original ideas taken over by the AAC? APC. I mean, APC rather. Yeah. How come, at what point did you initiate this idea? And no, it, why it, do you it, think it was stolen? public uh, information about it. I went to a airport and spoke about it. That instead of May 29th, June 12th, you become the democracy of Nigeria. A week later, the federal government already put together an award for Abiola, got the children to come and uh, announce June 12th as democracy day from that the past week or two week and a half later. The issue of minimum wage also came during uh, that period. I proposed uh, 100,000 and they went straight and uh, announced uh, 30,000 which is peanuts, uh, and started to implement it today. Most of the state governors have only implemented the minimum wage policy. They have several other ideas. Uh, the only state governor, who is uh, my state governor, also stole my idea of uh, commercializing marijuana. And he even traveled they will travel to learn how to do marijuana So are you saying to us that if you become the president of Nigeria, you will commercialize marijuana? Absolutely. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's the, that, that right there is a $4 billion industry. $4 billion dollar industry? Yes. I'm interested. That's, so to talk to so us. what you do is, we grow marijuana and then people should forget about the idea of uh, legalization because you don't need to legalize marijuana. It's already in some parts in Nigeria. The NDLA uh, set it up on the because now they are seeking public opinion about legalizing marijuana. That there are 10 million marijuana users in Nigeria with all the enforcement. And I can tell you categorically that the best place to get a good uh, joint is from yeah, India, 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 India. You're not, you're not encouraging people like that. Okay, <laughs> so, but that's not what I'm saying. I mean, just what I'm saying is that. Yes, yes, so, so, what is happening is that. It's a $4 billion. Dollar that's for business. Nigeria and for Nigeria. Yes. What we do is to start, you know, to grow it and sell to companies, countries around the world that are looking for the product because it has several uses beyond the getting high, which is what most people scandalize it for. It's used in curing cancer, especially people who are in the early stage of chemotherapy or doing chemotherapy. Usually, we vomit every morning, throw up, as we call it. Mm. It will help to solve that problem. It helps in curing arthritis. It helps, yes. The hemp tree itself can yeah, be used to make contact. I wonder how you get to know it. It's, it's a function of research. I research things a lot. You know, okay. That is how I operate. Uh, so it, it helps. You can use it to make t shirts. In fact, it is known that hemp is better than cotton uh, in terms of uh, marijuana. And it can be used to build houses. Uh, they call it hemp crates instead okay. of concrete. So it has so many uses. Why are we wasting it? Why are we? And the Nigerian government, by the way, claims on a yearly basis that they burn over 1.5 trillion naira worth of marijuana. They burn it. Mm. I guarantee you they don't. And if your budget is uh, how many this year? 11 trillion. Now you can get 1.3 trillion from just one cash crop. Why are you wanting it? Fantastic. Yeah. I just wanted to hold the tongue. And if yeah. you're just sitting, you're listening to Super FM, and I'm speaking to the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, Omoyele Shore. He has told us that if he becomes the president in 2023, he will ensure the expunge of the 1999 constitution, describing it as a fraudulent document. Yes, he has also said that the CBA governor ought not to be in office at this time, that he would, if he was the president, he would have ensured the sack. Of the CBN government. He also said the political elites in Nigeria are making it impossible for people like him to tell Nigerians the solution to the present problem facing the country. Now we'll be talking more to Omoyele Shore. However, we're we'll trying to see if the telephone lines are working and also we will take your questions on WhatsApp. Don't forget 5948 
1021. And if you would like to call in to ask a question, we would like for you to call in. And the numbers to call in, 070-5079-1021, as well as 081-1743-1071. Let's try the telephone lines first. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. All right, let's get to the voice message, and we have quite a number of them coming in now. Man, let's have this one. Good afternoon, presenter and our presidential candidate. Um, I, at this time, I want to commend you, sir, for your dogged um, courage to always say the truth. Everybody knows the situation of this country. I really want to commend you, and I want to say, well done. Um, I want to ask you a question. Um, it's about, I know if I, if I ask who you want to be the president of this country, you always say you will want to um, replace the president. But I want to say, apart from you, who else would you want to take over from this hour? Um, this hour, I don't know what to call him, president, sitting, sitting president. Please, I will need your answer, please. Uh, fantastic and so again we would like for um, those who will be calling uh, please tell us your name and where you're calling from if, even if you're sending um, the voice message uh, tell us your name and where you're calling from let's take another one and again if you're wondering the number to send a voice message to is 090-5948-1021 and we have this one coming in That's a question, and though the sender did not tell us the name, but again, we will want those that are sending us voice notes on WhatsApp, tell us your name and where you are sending a message from, and the number in 0905948 and uh, we would like to respond to your question. So, I'm going to sure that there you have the question that, uh, why do you often, I don't know if that's true, you often attack the person of Peter B on your social media. Yeah. And of course, I recall that at a certain time you wrote on your social media that you were one of those who made Peter i not knowing maybe that's the right word, yeah. uh, but again, something along that line. Yes. Um, we've been on this show for some 30 minutes now. Yes. I don't mention any of I'm selling to you my ideas. People only want to pick on what's interesting or suits them. I don't pick on Peter B. Pick on all the candidates, especially the frontline candidates. Because I know them, I, I know them by record. I've not met, uh, I've only met Peter Obi twice in my life. First, it was with uh, Chino Achebe in uh, Rhode Island, uh, US. And second time, also uh, during the ICANN event. So, <coughs> what candidates do is bring out their own your candidates. So, you don't say to me, that, oh, I attack Peter Obi, and it's just so that you will know. I was the one who provided the document, the court document, the Court of Appeal document that helped Peter B to overcome his candidature in the Labour Party. And I have said this now, I think almost a month and a half, they haven't disputed it. So that's a social to you that when it comes to fairness, I'm fair to everybody. Um, uh, equal opportunity, lifesaver. I don't know if he will still have made it, but I was sure that they were planning to disqualify him based on party factionalization. But that document, which uh, they used in overcoming that problem, came directly from me. And when I was saying it, his lawyer who handled the case, uh, not his lawyer, but lawyer to the, to the NLC, Femi Fala, and do you, we were sitting on the table, they never denied it. Peter Obi himself can't deny it. It's not the first time I'm helping Peter Obi. When they chased him out of uh, government house, the first time and the second time, I came to his aid supported them on Sahara reporters, ensuring that we're revealing what was going on on that next that got him uh, impeached at the time, and that was how he was able to finish his tenure. He himself, when he met me in the U.S., had asked me to come to his hotel room so that we could talk. He announced to everybody, this guy that 
Let me get that. Let me so, get that. But I never went. But all I'm saying is that where is it that you should hear me speak? That I don't talk about what is wrong with Nigeria and the characters who are behind Nigeria's problem. It's not Peter B. alone I talk about Buhari. I've spoken about Buhari this morning. You're like, Allah, how can you say the president is uh, incompetent? You know, because what I'm saying is, what I'm explaining this is that if we are not careful, when Buhari is over with this. And you're talking about President Buhari? Yes, yes. If we are not careful, somebody will come to you and me and say we should apologize to Buhari. When we, when we elect, you're talking about President Buhari. Yes. I, would, I would prefer you call him President Buhari. That's 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 your problem, not mine. Like, you can call him whatever I want. He's the president of Nigeria, and so that's his name. We call Obama Obama. You know, we're not under any obligation, even as a matter of uh, station rules, to call anybody my president. And I can decide that I don't see him as a president anyway. But that's a conversation for another future discussion. But I don't want Nigerians to be so shallow as not to listen to a whole spectrum of ideas that will make the Nigerian country work and not sentimental about oh, why are you attacking Peter Obi? I attacked Dinobu too. Peter Obi attacked Dino Malari too. You know, everybody's attacked but do you because it's election season. If I may ask you. And I attacked Dino Malari too. And a lot of you were happy about oh, she already gave it to Dino Malari. But when you give it to Obi, Oh, you know, why are you attacking on me? If, if, if Obi doesn't ask. have any, if he doesn't want to get questioned, he will have more business contesting in the election. In the so do you, have see, million people. do you see Peter Obi as a formidable opponent to you in the election? No, I don't. So you think you can do better than Peter Obi in the election? We will let the election come and go, but you see, we are all in the social media sector. Okay. And one of the pioneers of people who use social media a lot and I introduce a lot of uh, creative use of uh, social media through Sahara Potter. So I don't get scared when people say to you, you know, and I think it's a political, I, I, I know it's a political strategy to present a country with faith complete. You only one candidate will win. Any other person, get out of the way. I mean, they did it for Buhari too. In, look at where it got to us. So why are, we, why are we sentimental about who will win? Let everybody, Present the ideas. Don't tell somebody that they cannot be something because you have a candidate. But you can also do that. It's a political strategy. It's, it, it works for some people. It doesn't work for some people. So where you get the pushback is for people who it doesn't work on. And I'm one of those people you can't tell to go and shut up. You are wasting your time. Fantastic. We're talking to the presidential candidate of the AAC. Um, We'll just go back to some of the voice notes that are coming in. <coughs> we're also trying to see if we can get back the telephone line. I look up to you and I thank you so much for joining us. This is Super Hi, Hello. All across the nation from 33,000 plus, maybe to 15 to 19 million uh, uh, votes in 2023. And thank you so much for that. Let's take another one so that we can have the ASC presidential candidate answer all the questions in one. So, hello, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Super Effect. Seven nine one zero two one and zero eight one one seven four three one zero two one. Now we have some issues with the um, network channel, but again, many voice notes are coming in, and so we can just try these voice notes now and see how that works. Take us out of the present situation. Let's try the telephone line. Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. This is Super FM. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, again, a very awful telephone line. But again, uh, one of the 
person asked during the last time you were in the election, you got 33,000 votes. What are your strategy to ensure that you increase the number of votes of this time around? And the second one is asking that, what strategies do you have in place to ensure that um, Nigerians are taken away? I know you've been talking to us about all of this. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've told you, and I don't want to keep repeating myself, that there was no election in 2019, the rest of the what it did was to fabricate numbers. Even by the general standards, they, you know, that was the intention when they were swearing in, uh, in, I mean, after the swearing of uh, that was the intention. And we we're hearing from the government, uh, from the DSS, that it was article that won the election. But they... That's in the good way, except from the great fine, yes. because we know, of course, what it was. <coughs> yes, yeah, so they were saying it, the DSS guys were saying it to me that, you know, we know what happened. That was article that won the election. But if the election was incredible, why can you be adding? You can't do statistics based on wrong uh, parameters. But the real parameters is to allow every candidate to campaign, debate, and because a lot of processes lead to uh, credible elections, not you know the events on that day itself. So, by the way, on my way here, I got uh, one of our researchers found out that one of the places that I'm most searched about is in River State, mm -hmm. Port Harcourt, you know, when they narrow that down. So there's a lot of interesting young people, old people, who want to get out of the hysteria into which our political elites have put us in this country. And they are aware that there's a candidate out there who's not afraid of anybody, who's got vision, who's got mission, and who is you know, very agile, uh, healthy, uh, uh, anybody can force it, by the way, uh, that can change the situation. And they are very eager to hear from us. They are very eager to vote for the person. But you've already seen, you know, all these efforts on the side to rig the election and making sure that things that you are even legitimately entitled to, like debates, you know, you're not allowed to erect your uh, billboards in, in Lagos, where we're placing posters in the election, they have a group that tears up posters that are not of the APC. So, how do you live in that kind of society where people don't respect the rules for democracy and election and keep asking, how are you going to win? How can you win an election that doesn't happen? So but I can guarantee you that if the elections are fair, fair there's no way. If the election are fair, fair. Yes, they, there's they, no the way. The umpire has said to us, the umpire being INEC has said to us, that this time the election will be free and fair. And we have the electoral act, we have the beaver system, and several other systems. So again, talk to us. As one of those that will be contesting the presidential election, are you assured in the electoral act, in the electoral system, to guarantee a proper election this time around? I'm not sure. That's, that's, that's the truth. But we're going to make sure that we fight it. Part of why we're participating in this election is to put in place a legacy of free of election, whether they like it or not. I have participated in the election once in 2019. I knew what I like people did. And I have been in meetings with them with questions regarding how elections should hold and how you can make it happen. And not properly answered, and you see that the APC government has succeeded in taking over the IMEC uh, board with their people. This has not been denied. So the citizens must be ready for whatever it takes to ensure that the outcome of this election will not produce candidates who are not fit or who are not one election by one to the IMEC. And you don't, uh, you don't want to say enough of that because it's very, very, very all right, very well. So again, um, uh, we'll, we'll just stay there. We'll have a voice notes and voice coming in. I'm going to take two of them, and we have less than 10 minutes more. On the show. Let's take this one. Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. This is Sweet My Friend. Hello. Okay, so let's have the voice notes now. We can take some of the voice notes.
again, we would seem to be having some challenges with the telephone lines, but you can send us a short voice note, and the number to send a voice note to is 0905-9481021. Send us a voice note, tell us where you're sending the voice note from, and also tell us again when you ask your question. If you want to call in to be part of the show live, you can just try the number, try 0705079102 or 081 Those are the two numbers available right now and for you to participate. Now we might just have another number because um, this number is not available. Again, um, the, the, uh, okay, we seem to have a voice that's going on. That voice note is not a very clear one. We apologize, so we can't take that. So, you inaugurated your campaign in Kansas State. Having a like that sheet, and you said to him that, well, that's something you said about it. That again, people are beginning to say, having a like that sheet is not a very known figure until now. So, can why the choice of can and having a like that sheet? Why the choice of having a like that sheet? Yeah, I don't know about that. She is uh, very well known in Kano and Northern South as a uh, defender of the poor. And uh, he runs a law firm that provides pro bono services, that's free services to the poor people to get out of whatever they need for them. For your information, he is a human rights program or a lead defender to the exact act. But that's how I met him. When I had this come out of dimension, I met this guy very calm, but super great. He was working with family power on how to get things like that get out of detention. And you can imagine a lawyer that can help us that try to get out of Paris Creek. It's not uh, somebody you see from know. It's a person of uh, well known quantity. And also, we were following that tradition of service. By choosing Kano because of Amin Khan, who most of you are aware of, the great socialist politician in Kano, who has schools, own theory. He is the one who invented the North Alka Wars. He is all known as a theorist, how to do it for poverty. So, those are the major reasons why we want to do it using Kano as a logical. Fantastic. So again, we have another number you can call, and a whole lot of people are trying to call us. So get this number. You can call this number, 081 06 4706 um, We just have less than 10 minutes more on the show. Again, the number to call is 081 06 and we'll see if the calls will come through on this number. Let's take this one now. Hello, good afternoon. This is Supai. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, we can hear you. All right, we'll take another one. Um, yes, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Yes, good afternoon. We can hear us. Tell us again. Yes. We can hear you. Speak up. We can hear you. Okay, I am coming from the room of 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 the I want to ask you one simple, very question, a very simple question. So finally, to be as an abstract of the neighbor. But okay. at the end of the election, to be find that he was winner, will you accept defeat? All right, so uh, thank you so much. So you're asking him, uh, will he accept defeat at the end of the election? So again, okay, let's take another one. and. We're just going to switch here. Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. This is Super High Fan. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Question, George.
If the Lord has told the people together, and if the potential president is not hammering on giving the people a law, even God could not hold the country because Moses to come to the mountain and take the Ten Commandments. That Ten Commandment is food of the Israelites. Uh, thank you so much, Judge. Uh, uh, Judge, I, you would have asked the question, but again, your statement is noted. And I want to show that I'm not going to say that. STC, if we just take one other call, and the number is 0806 554706. Hello, good afternoon. I thank you for joining us. Yes, tell us the name of where you're calling from. So, ask your question. My friend in the studio, my young friend. He contested that the president in 2019, I have contested in 2023. How good are you and the other people are not? Okay. So, being a citizen of a country that is doing well for yourself doesn't make you an elite. The word elite is something we use to describe a special privileged set of people. That's how I interpret it. You know, it may not be the exact dictionary <laughs> definition of it, but we have frequently used the word to describe people with privilege uh, in a society like ours. So, so that's why they categorize them as economic elites, the political elites, in all kinds of categories. And I want to quickly answer the guy who was asking for me as declared when I would accept the results. Actually, I'm not going to put it that way. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, if you lose in this election, will you accept defeat? If there's an election? There will be election. That's well, what I'm accepting. There's a difference between that's an election and a selection. Be, be, very, just be very careful how you jump into when they prom they've been promising us free and fair election since the beginning of Nigeria. It's never happened. Even the British read our in a, our, our elections and also particularly the census in the interest of some people. So wait until the election comes before you start asking premeditated questions about what I will never accept a rigged election. I'm, I'm old enough. Um, uh, learned enough to understand what an election is if it is an election because I have fought for a credible election before when I was in my 20s you will see the video if you google it I was with Abiola in 1993 in 1993 I was 22 years old there was an election credible won by him they cancelled the election I fought for it so I know what a free and fair election is if we have one you can guarantee that you don't need to call me but if we don't you will hear from us all of us. And, 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 and just before we begin to wrap this up, you've just... But I didn't us. get the last questions by that man. He was asking that, would you still consider yourself as a youth? Because I've, never, you I've, never, I've never told anybody I'm a youth before. I know what a young person, a youth is. And most of I'm, I'm campaigning or contesting because I'm constitutionally qualified, mm. you know, according to their rules, qualified to contest. If you are 35 and above, as a matter of fact, if you look at Nigerian constitution very well, or the electoral act uh, that you know, not too young to run law that he made, he did not consider. There's no provision for a real youth to be president of Nigeria because 35 and above is not youth, and you can't be less than 35 to contest as president of Nigeria. 
We go and look at the meaning of youth under the UN definition of youth. You discover that even the age 35 is not considered as youth. But I will say this: I'm youthful. I, I, I look younger than most of the candidates. You know, uh, even the ones that are in their fifties. You know, but I look younger than them because I do a lot of youthful things. I exercise. I do sports. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, I my my kind of outlook towards life is youthful. You know, you've set to us even in this year.